Hello and welcome to the Crypto Jungle. My name is Blue the Bear. Uh, here on the channel, we keep crypto simple. We look at the price, we look at volume, or we look at uh, fundamental um, indicators as well as what what is going to be the focus today. In today's video, I want to talk about miners and what is going on with the hash rate of uh, Bitcoin mining currently. So. Um, for those who don't know, there is a uh, indicator on TradingView called the Hash Ribbons. It's relatively popular. If you've been, you know, looking at TA on uh, YouTube for a while, you've probably come across this indicator. Um, and basically, what it measures is it measures the amount of uh, mining hash power that is in the Bitcoin network. Uh, why that's important is it is going to contribute to the uh difficulty adjustment so every two weeks there's a difficulty adjustment that will either increase or decrease the amount of difficulty it is for these miners to mine a block uh, in order to keep the blocks somewhere around 10 minutes so every bitcoin block will be mined every 10 minutes it doesn't uh you know it's not an exact science so you might get blocks that mine fast you might get blocks that mine slow but uh anyways i i'm getting a little too uh too nerdy about it what i want to make note of is the differences or the comparison rather from what we saw in 2018 before we had the final capitulation versus what we're seeing now so why don't we actually go ahead and take a look at the 2018 uh price action all right so basically there are four parts to a market cycle you're going to have an accumulation a markup a distribution a markdown so where we are in one of these four parts i believe that we are here at the end of uh markdown period so we've already had our distribution and we're at the markdown period so when we look at uh, the past to make comparisons to that it's going to be the transition from down to sideways okay so that transition for me is around this area we really we had a huge huge shakeout and basically started trading sideways around here um this is also where the hash rate was increasing. Now, the problem with hash rate increasing while the price does not go up is it creates a lot of pressure, financial pressure on the mining, uh, on the mining farms because they, the difficulty keeps getting higher. We keep raising the difficulty. And so the miners are earning less and less money. Now, every mining farm is going to have its kind of break even price. Some miners will only mine in profit. Other miners are willing to mine at a deficit. But uh, for the most part, you know, once mining becomes not profitable, they're going to shut off their machines. And that's what we see here. This flip where it goes to red. This is called minor capitulation. The minor capitulation is when the miners just give up. It's it's too difficult to uh, it's too difficult to mine Bitcoin at a profit, so they turn their machines off because they're losing too much money paying for electricity. And this is kind of the circumstance that we're looking at right now. We're kind of sitting at this boring level, this boring support level, uh, not a lot of price action, and the mining difficulty is continuing to increase. The hash rate continues to go up. Now, eventually, the miners do capitulate, and they capitulate about two weeks, two weeks prior to price capitulation. So this is just speculative as, uh, you know, speculative for right now. But um, we're either at the level of a capitulation about to have a rally to convince the market or we are have already had our capitulation and we're getting ready to exit this level right here. So this kind of mirrors a lot of what I've been saying over the past few weeks, over the past few months in regards to, uh, you know, we're either at the floor or we're going to take one more leg down. So what to look out for currently 
in today's price is going to be another capitulation. Now, today we already have a capitulation that happened a few months ago. So we could be on our way up in this direction. But I'm going to be laser focused because the, the only difference here is uh, our capitulation happened during the downtrend. So this is getting a little messy here. Let me erase some of this stuff. But our capitulation happened during the downtrend. It didn't happen when uh, things were boring. It didn't happen during the flat part before the final capitulation. We didn't have this long drawn out floor before ours. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, present day. Okay, so present day, you can see the capitulation that did take place. But this capitulation took place right at the at the end of the downtrend. We hadn't had any period of trading sideways. So this draws a little bit of concern for me because the problem isn't where the capitulation occurred. The problem is the divergence between price and hash rate. OK, so this this capitulation could easily be a panic as prices kept falling. Now we're at a boring part of the market cycle where we're just trading sideways, but the hash rate is still climbing. This is a problem. This is what puts pressure on the miners. This is what puts a lot of uh, it basically squeezes miners out of competition. They can no longer compete depending on their energy costs and depending on how efficient their mining farm is. Now, I will say this is ultimately a positive thing for the Bitcoin network. A lot of people will say, oh, this is, you know, we can go into a death spiral. No, there's always going to be miners that can mine Bitcoin. There's always going to be somebody that can afford to do so. And as we progress and as we develop new technology, both on the ASIC mining side, as well as integration to power plants, we're going to see more and more innovation that makes the miners more and more competitive. So this is a good thing. This is ultimately a good thing. We want to see the hash rate continue to climb to higher levels. It's just interesting that it's happening at a divergence because as this continues to rise, you're going to see this capitulation take place uh, as the miners begin to you know, enter into the realm of not being profitable. So what I think is going to happen first, though, is I think from a technical point of view, let's actually turn over to the TA side of things now. From a technical point of view, I think we're quite oversold. I mean, it's very hard to look at much and not think that it's oversold. Um, there's not a lot of room to the downside from a technical point of view is what I'm trying to say. So I do think that a recovery rally is possible and even a little bit probable. When we look at this, uh, we have kind of our double bottom formation here on the daily. So. And this is happening at, you know, just at getting close to the 50 on the RSI. So 50 on the RSI is where momentum begins to re-enter. So there's a possibility that we could have a momentum shift here. And then when we drop down to the smaller time frames, we have a few interesting signals. I have this signal right here. This is a, a spring into a sign of strength onto this very long drawn out LPS. Now, if we break down from this level, all of this becomes invalidated, which means that this consolidation will probably break to the downside. But if we're able to hold this level, let me clean it up, clean up the drawings. If we're able to hold this level, turn around and break past the 20 mark, I think that we could rally and I think that we could rally up to 25,000, maybe even 30,000, maybe even beyond that point. So really, we from a TA point of view, we want to be laser focused on this 20k level. If we can get a nice move above that 20k level, it's going to be a very positive sign uh, for me to think that this is actually an accumulation zone that we're looking at. Um, furthermore, from that, we also have what's happening in traditional finance. So there's a little bit of a trend shift setup that's happening in traditional finance. And we can see that when we look at the DXY, this is the dollar currency index. So this is the dollar, the US dollar against all the major currencies. We've been watching this trade in an uptrend for a while. 
Um, and what we need is we need a break of structure, which we kind of have the beginnings of a break of structure right now. And then we need to break below this level of around 110 on this chart. So for the bulls out there, we've, saw, we've seen a lot of rejection at this level right here. Um, which is good because it's coming in as a lower high. So we have our, from a trend perspective, we have high, low, higher high, higher low, lower high. If we can shift the trend to a lower low, now we have a really good bull case that, we, that could be made. Um, at least in the short term, we could see the, the dollar losing strength, which is gonna bring risk on back to the equities, which we are currently seeing when we look at the S&P and the NASDAQ. Taking a look at the S&P 500, you can see that we are bouncing off of this level. This is on the weekly chart. We have a weekly bullish divergence, low, lower low, low, higher low here on the rsi so there's a bullish divergence and we're getting some positive price action off of that level all in the context of a falling dollar this is a very positive sign for the short term again i'm still quite macro bearish on the high time frame setups i'm not going to be bullish again until we can get back above the previous all-time high i would have to i would be forced to flip my bias bias at that point but um yeah as far as it stands right now it's looking like we have the possibility of a short-term rally uh, taking a look at the Nasdaq, same sort of thing. We have that low, my brush tool, my low, lower low, causing a divergence here on the RSI with a low and a higher low. So, and this is high time frame stuff on the weekly. This is high time frame stuff. We have weekly bullish divergences taking place. So, it's a positive sign. Now, I don't want everybody to think that the bull market's back on and it's altcoin season or anything like that. I really think that you need to still be on edge and practice uh, an abundance of caution in these current market conditions. But for the uh, for the crypto market potential, you know, it's looking not too bad. And if Bitcoin can break above 20K, like I said, it's gonna be a very positive sign that we could bring some sort of hype back into the crypto market and uh, make a little bit of money before we head right back down to the downside. So not too bad. Uh, let's take a look at Ethereum BTC. Ethereum BTC getting looks like it wants to turn around here. Uh, we still have a ton of resistance and this overall structure is quite bearish to me. So I don't see this ending uh, in a breakout personally. If I was to take a, a bet here, I don't think that we're going to see a breakout here in ETH BTC, but we could see a rally in both ETH uh, USD uh, and BTC alike. So uh, a rally is certainly possible. For Ethereum, that would be a rally up to around $2,000. And for Bitcoin, that would be a rally up to approximately $30,000 before our next major uh, overhead resistance is hit. QNT, a lot of people paying attention to QNT right now. We have slown down a little bit. Uh, Alpha New Metrics, just is an incredible indicator uh we're green wave so green wave is good we're on a bullish cross which is good alpha new metrics told you to take profits right at the top um but what we're needing to pay attention to now from a wyckoff perspective and this is what i really like is that transition from downtrend to uptrend um is we need to see a little bit of a backup phase so if we can hold this level for the next few weeks i think that'll be good and if you can get a break above it that would be your high uh, probability entry right there so allow this to consolidate allow it to trade sideways allow the bulls and bears to make up their decision and if we break bullish on this then you can absolutely uh you know have a lot of confidence in your ability to go long on qnt um, another one that has a very similar setup currently is xrp exact same setup basically you know where we have the green wave we have uh we didn't get uh, a trim signal on alpha new metrics but we're in our backup phase so basically this trend line right here if we break above this trend line it's your green light to go break above that trend line it's your green light to go so uh yeah it's very similar narrative very similar setup and uh 
we will see how that plays out. All right, Patch wants to take a look at AXS. Let's take a look at AXS. Uh... <clears throat> AXS. Now, all things metaverse and all things play to earn is probably not going to be very good. Um, they're just they're just not doing well. Uh, AXS looks like absolute shit. Looks like shit. Uh, there is a change of character. There is a change of behavior. So you can see the change here. Change of character, for those who don't know, is you, you, we have a, a volatile downside, volatile downwards uh, trend. And then all of a sudden, it becomes a lot less volatile and stops trading so uh, aggressively to the downside. So this is what's known as a change of behavior or a change of character in Wyckoff. And this could indicate the early uh, points of an accumulation. So if AXS is in an accumulation, you're basically just gonna watch that trading range. So let's actually put a, a real trading range around it, not my sloppy drawings. Yeah, so we're just, we're trading sideways. So until this can break above the channel, there's really no reason to go long. Also, the narratives out there right now for, you know, anything metaverse, anything play to earn. You know, a lot of people lost a lot of money on anything play to earn. So there's still a lot of uh, negative sentiment that needs to be overcome from that. So, you know, please understand that uh, things will take time. Things will take time to repair. Oh, it's interesting. I just noticed that my comment section is not functioning properly. Um, oh, well, okay. Whatever. Um, yeah, so, you know, this will continue inside of this channel. Once you get a break out of that channel, then you can begin to pay attention. But as it stands right now, you know, not great. Alpha new metrics, anything nice to say on alpha new metrics? No, nothing at all. Uh, we're below the seven on the three day. We are below the seven on the weekly. It's it's a pretty there's no there's no sign of a momentum shift just yet. Doesn't mean that we can't get one in the next few weeks. But as it stands right now, this is a very unhealthy chart that doesn't show much promise for price appreciation in the short to medium term. It's going to be a long grind before this can turn it around. Let's take a look at Aptos. Aptos finally turning around here. This is on the one hour. So we're breaking down. If we get, uh, let's slap a trading range on this. Yeah, I think if we start to break below this trading range right here, it's probably going to head to the downside. Um, it's an interesting project. You know, I've done a little bit of research on it now. And uh, basically, the team from Facebook and Meta that started the Libra project that uh, they bailed on, everybody bailed on Libra, they decided to go a different direction. And uh, I don't know if this is uh, Meta's team specifically, but uh, Aptos was one of the development teams for Libra and uh, they've gone in a different direction and they are heavily backed. There's a lot of money backing this project, an insane amount of money backing this project. So it's certainly going to be a project that you want to pay attention to. But for me, a new coin launch, uh, I don't touch new coin launches. They just, they flop. So we're gonna see this one probably head down to, well, where, where did it launch? It's got a low at one buck. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see it go back down to a buck. So, you know, you got a good 80% retracement, in my opinion, if it is typical, if it follows the typical trajectory of what new token launches do, we're going to see about an 80 to 90% correction. Um, at that point, we'll begin to trade sideways. And then that's when I'm going to start paying attention to this one. But for me right now, you know, you might get some volatility to the upside. You might get some volatility to the downside. It's really, there's not enough data to really get a good handle on where this thing will land. So for me, not touching it. It's uh, not recommended, but uh, yeah, it looks like we're getting a bearish cross here on the hourly. We'll see how that plays out. 
any other projects you guys want to take a look at sushi in its trading range so we have a lot of stuff that has potential just nothing's really broken out uh, maker getting a bullish cross but the wave is still red so i'm gonna ignore that bullish cross immutable x falling to the downside of its trading range it's very very oversold um you know from an investment point of view this one might not be bad i i don't see it turning around anytime soon but uh the the product is good and i think it'll increase in users eventually and it's incredibly oversold right now uh frax shares eh, middle of the range can't do anything with that convex not much going on with convex yeah cardano let's go through shitcoin bingo so on the weekly here cardano is still below the seven so there's no momentum that can carry us forwards uh ape still below the seven not a good one to be going long on i don't like to trade anything when it's below the seven on the weekly cro below the seven no momentum doge below the seven no momentum shiba still below the seven solana still below the seven theta still below the seven v chain still below the seven there's just well, no demand there's no demand for cryptocurrency whatsoever we barely have demand for bitcoin barely barely have demand for bitcoin we have even less demand for ethereum so as you go down the list there's just going to be less and less market participation overall i think we can just wrap it up there um all right so that's it for the market update i hope you guys learned something from the hash ribbons so to recap the hash ribbons what i'm looking for is a crossover if we get a crossover in the hash ribbons that's going to signal minor capitulation. If we get minor capitulation and price hasn't moved very much, it's not going to be a good sign. And we could see a repeat of 2018 where we could take another leg down. That's what I've been trying to figure out this whole la these whole last few months here. These last three months basically is are we at the bottom or do we no need another leg down? If it becomes increasingly expensive for miners to mine Bitcoin, they're going to not only shut off their machines, but they're going to start selling some of their Bitcoin reserves to cover the cost of the electricity that they were trying to hold off on pay on paying as long as possible. So that's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this content. If you did, please leave it a like. If you didn't, uh, fuck off, I guess. <laughs> uh, share this with anybody that you think would find some value. Do all the things. You guys know what to do. And uh, yeah, please trade safe. It is a jungle out there. Peace.